Hello YouTube. If anyone has ever stood on the cliffs of the southern tip of Africa, as I have done, she or he will have seen the meeting point of the Indian and Atlantic Oceans. If they were lucky as I have been, they would have seen two different colours of those two oceans as the powerful warm Agulhas current meets the cold Benguela current. One is flowing south, the other north. Looking at these two oceans, it really does look as though they meet and never mix. When I did my test dive down to 40 meters, I could sense the differences in temperature as I descended where layers of water seemed to keep different temperatures as I went through them. Some layers were warmer lower down than the ones above, which seemed illogical at the time. It really seems to be that there are different areas of the sea that don't mix and maintain their properties, such as salinity and temperature. Many years later, Muslims pointed out to me that this was mentioned in their holy book, the Quran, around 1400 years ago, that there was actually a barrier between different types of water and that scientists have recently found this to be true. They showed me pretty pictures and videos of people who all had impressive titles who told me that we, to put it in their words, have recently come Finally, to know all these which we have things. Come to know recently. I don't and really know what the sentence, we have come to know, means, but I suppose this means that scientists have run some tests and experiments and have found out that their data indicates that different seas and types of water don't mix. Now, I am not an oceanographer, so if I don't know something, I go to the experts. To be able to ask the right questions, I checked what the Quran actually has to say on the topic. So, as all humans do in the year 2011, I do a little bit of research before opening my mouth. So, I enter the term barrier into a search engine for the Quran. So, it came up with 11 verses which all contain the word barrier. If we look at the contents of the verses, we see that the first one has nothing to do with our kind of barrier. The second one is also a different kind of barrier. The third one is a barrier talking about the Gog and the Magog. And the fourth one is a different kind of barrier. The fifth one is a repetition of the Gog and the Magog. The sixth one is also not kind of... Uh, ah, the seventh one. Here we go. He has let free two seas kinds of water, one palatable and sweet, and there is a barrier between them. And the next one is about a god who boasts about his achievements, who is talking about a flattened, uh, solid and stationary earth, and then a barrier between the two seas. And then we have again a different kind of barrier. Ah, the last one is a barrier which none of them can, can transgress. So what we have is uh, chapter number 25, verse 53, and he it is who hath given independence to the two seas, though they meet, one palatable sweet and the other saltish bitter, and has set a bar and a forbidding ban between them. Then chapter 27, verse 61, is he not best who made the earth a fixed abode, and placed rivers in the falls, and placed from her firm hills therein, and has set a barrier between the two seas? And in chapter 55, he hath loosed the two seas they meet, there is a barrier between them, they encroach not one upon the other. Well, it looks as though we have two different sets of statements here. One saying that the different seas don't move into the other's territory, and the other claiming that salt water and palatable or sweet water can't mix. Sounds like we're looking at either a vertical or horizontal barrier, so let's take a look at this. Now, keeping in mind my earlier observation of the Indian and Atlantic Ocean meeting at the tip of South Africa, it would seem like they don't mix and move into each other. But that is just my personal observation, a highly superficial one at that, as all I'm observing is light being reflected in different ways from water with different properties. To get to the bottom of this, I now look for papers written by oceanographers who recently came to know <laughs> that oceans don't mix. But these experts on the topic don't write anything about this. Not one expert in the field mentions the Quran as a source or refers to any kind of barrier. <laughs> Strange. All write about currents and even show how the oceans on the southern tip of Africa happily mix and exchange temperature and salinity. It even has a name the thermohaline circulation, or THC. All write about estuaries where rivers flow into the sea and where the sweet water slowly and gradually mixes with the salt water. 
The further away from the mouth of the river one goes, the more the water gets salty until it is mere salt water. So what am I doing wrong? In my despair, I go to Islam science or Islamic science pages where I read that modern science has discovered that the places where the different seas meet, there is a barrier between them. And they always show the same two diagrams with the same text, always citing principles of oceanography by Mr. Davis. Or they refer to estuaries where they say that the salinity at the beginning and the end are different. Well, I don't think I need any scientific education for that because I can simply stick my finger in the water and taste the difference. Some slides actually try to sound scientific because they say that in estuaries you have a bit decline zone with a marked density discontinuity separating the two layers or that in oceans they quote principles of oceanography by Mr. Davis. I think I will have to take a closer look at these claims and pay them a visit. As I've already pointed out, when you go to these pages, you always find the same two diagrams, which are always figures 13 and 14, regardless of where they are on the page. They always say the same things, and they always refer to Mr. Davis and his book. So let's take a look at the original of the book. What we see is that on pages 92 and 93, you have the same diagram. But unfortunately, what happens is that the caption was deleted because the original says the Mediterranean sea water as it enters the Atlantic over the Gibraltar sill. Nothing about a barrier. But this can't be as it means that the Mediterranean Sea is in fact entering the Atlantic Ocean and that is not allowed to be. So it is deleted and replaced with a more Quran friendly text. Reading the text in the book by Davis we see nothing about a barrier and that the book is talking about water masses not two seas meeting. Muslim miracle seekers shoot themselves in the foot here as the diagram clearly shows the Mediterranean transgressing its barrier by several hundred kilometers. Oops. But what about the other option, sweet water running into the sea? Here's a very quick experiment, quick because I've speeded it up so you don't fall asleep. I take three glasses, add a fair amount of salt to one, fill it up with water. The other glass only contains clear water. Now I mix them in a third glass. I didn't have food coloring, so we'll just have to go with the milky color of the salt water to see the difference. What actually happens? Do they stay separate? Nope. I wait one hour and then add a drop of oil to demonstrate what kind of reaction I would have expected instead of salt and sweet water mixing. Is this amount of salt water too little for Allah to watch over it or are tests such as this exempted? Well, no, the Quran makes no exceptions and says there is a barrier, which means always and everywhere. Let me make a quick summary. No scientist has ever mentioned any barrier between sea sweet and salt water or between any two seas. And I also suppose no miracle seeker has ever thought of the consequences of sweet water not being able to mix with salt water, as this would lead to huge problems with the water cycle and what evaporates and what is left behind. After a few thousand years, would we have only sweet water and huge residues of minerals and salt in the empty oceans? It seems that the Quran simply mentions the obvious. Between the Red Sea and the Mediterranean Sea, we have land. Estuaries have a gradual increase of salinity that does not affect the river itself. And that is it. But unfortunately, it gets a lot worse, as I mentioned earlier. Let's go back to the diagram of an estuary. To prove their point, miracle seekers show a diagram of an estuary which they modify and label with a slight enhancement. What they forgot to read up on is that this refers to a vertically homogeneous estuary. The opposite of what the Quran states as the figure clearly demonstrates the mixing of salty and sweet water. They use a vertically mixed estuary instead of a vertically stratified example. They mention a picnocline zone which is a vertical density gradient and not a horizontal one as shown in their diagram. Oops. But there is another possibility and that is that the last verse simply refers to horizontal and not vertical barrier which follows Aristotle's statement that the drinkable sweet water then is light and is all of it drawn up the salt water is heavy and remains behind. Now Muhammad maybe understood this and called it a barrier which is nonsensical as both meet like when it rains. But when making an observation, it depends on the personality of the observer, whether this will be transmitted as a fact and to be accepted without any questioning, or whether an observer goes and investigates the reasons and underlying facts for an observation. 
A negative example is Islam Responses 111, who considers Harun Yahya to be a scientist and who, after I pointed out some errors in his video, initially tried to school me and then simply did what many Muslim miracle seekers do best, block the truth out and remain ignorant about the truth, not realizing that they are the ones being misled and lied to. He thinks the BBC is an American channel and makes fun of the two books the Quran is based on, the Jewish and Christian Bibles. What causes miracle seekers to quote the Davis book at all is that it mentions the unique properties of the Gibraltar sill as a partial barrier, restricting, not prohibiting, circulation and mixing, something that normally happens within a few kilometers. The book actually explains the totally logical and scientifically proven layers of water, which retain their temperature and salinity and thus density for a while, something that can be observed when standing on the cliffs of South Africa or when descending during a dive in an ocean. But of course the waters mix due to currents and any kind of movement in the water. Conclusion All in all, the barrier claim is non-scientific, factually incorrect and hardly a miracle. But then, if you are a Muslim and have sufficient faith that your God exists, this small detail should not deter you from believing what can't be proven. Thank you for your time.